Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Happy Friday. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. We are remote. We are getting ready to head out to Rockford, the three of us. It's going to be a fun night at the BMO, and uh, we're going to talk about that to start the show. We're going to talk about the Stanley Cup playoffs and the latest on that, and uh, a little bit of... uh, I don't know, unfortunate, unsettling news from around the NHL. Uh, we're going to fill you in on the latest uh, with Val Nishushkin as well. Uh, some details coming out today that are unpleasant. Uh, we're not going to speculate, just want to give you the update. But let's get started here. Greg's uh, preview for tonight's Calder Cup uh, playoff series with the Rockford Ice Hogs and Texas Stars dropped just moments ago. So, Greg, what do Blackhawks fans need to know about the Rockford Ice Hogs and Texas Stars? Well, there's not going to be a ton of future NHL stars on display in this series. Uh, yes, you got Lucas Reichel, you got Alex Vlasic. High hopes for both of those guys. I know, a handful of other young players for the Ice Hogs, and there are some decent, a handful of young players, Maverick Bork, uh, a, a, one of the stars, top prospects. I mean, it, was there any doubt that a guy named Maverick would be playing his hockey in Texas? I mean, it's it's too good to be true. Uh, but he he was on fire to end the season. He I think he had seven goals and eleven points in his last seven games, even though that was weeks ago. But um, you know, it uh, the, these are two teams built very similarly. A lot of AHL veterans. They both like to play high tempo hockey. They like to be aggressive when they have the puck. So I think it's going to come down to the veteran leadership on these teams and the two goaltenders. Uh, both teams have very good young goaltenders. Uh, of course, Arvid so- Soderblom, uh, the uh, not missing, just missing from us, Arvid Soderblom. Uh, he he is okay. He will be playing tonight. Uh, we've documented his season. He, you know, we saw him up here early. Went back down to Rockford, struggled, got hurt, uh, missed about three weeks, had to come back from what, you know, was a pretty significant injury. Uh, that's the first time he's really dealt with that. Took him a little while, but the last uh, last month and a half of the season, he was the, 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 the wall that we got grown accustomed to seeing last year uh, in his last 10 starts, including the two overtime wins against Iowa, uh, he's got a 917 save percentage and a 2.0 goals against average. That will get things done this time of year. Um, and on the other side is Matthew Murray, not that Matt Murray, but Matthew Murray, uh, who, who's been really good for Texas this year too. We saw him at the United Center. He actually started a game for the Stars. I believe that was the, the game in – was that the game in March? That was the Max uh, Domi return yeah. game, yep. Yeah, so, uh, and, and and beat them, I believe. Well, good chances are he. I don't remember the outcome of that. That game, was but... that was his first NHL start, and I believe he won. Yeah, I believe that's true. Yeah. I mean, listen, if we if we want to just we can't remember, just say he beat the Blackhawks, and you're <laughs> going to be right most times. So those are that's the goalie matchup. Um, should be fun. These two teams, the the Stars won the division with 92 points, 13 more than the Ice Hogs. But I think the Ice Hogs were in this position last year. They beat Texas, swept them in a two-game series, much like they did the Iowa. Then they had to play uh, the Chicago Wolves, who went on to win the uh, Calder Cup, and the Wolves just dominated them. That game, that series was never close. Uh, men against boys. But this is a different Ice Hogs team. As I mentioned, they've got some of those guys, David Gust, who has uh, two goals already in the playoffs. He was a big part of that Wolves team last year that won the Calder Cup. And Brent Cini and Luke Philp, uh, those guys have been huge. So those are the guys that are going to make the difference for the Ice Hogs. Um, Stars have a couple of of, of veteran guys like that as well. They have uh, uh, Riley Barber led their team in, in points. He's an AHL vet. You may remember him. He, he was a, a, a top sco- goal scorer for the Grand Rapids Griffins for a couple of seasons. And then you have Curtis McKenzie, who seems to have been in, has been in the AHL since like 1985. Still there. Captain. <laughs> uh, he was with that Stars team that beat the Ice Hogs in the 2015 Western Conference Finals, but then lost to Toronto in the Calder Cup Final. 
He was captain of the Chicago Wolves team that lost to Charlotte in the 2019 Calder Cup final. So he's captained two teams to Calder Cup finals in his career. He's actually one of my favorite players. I got to cover him two years with the Wolves. He's one of my favorite players I've ever covered and and to watch. He's just a warrior. I remember a, a Wolves game. He took a puck to the mouth, dropped his gloves on the ice, skated to the locker room, and like was missed like one shift and was back out and, and finished. The game. He was always a guy that, yeah. He was always a guy that was, you know, after tough losses, would come out and talk to you and give you real honest thoughtful answers not just kind of uh, i know i have to kind of do this uh yeah curtis mckenzie has been is one of my favorite uh guys uh, i've ever caught co- i've ever covered great great guy and uh you know hopefully he's not great on the ice for the next few games but he's gonna be a pain <laughs> in the ass he's he's that type of guy that you hate to play against but you love him when he's on your team so should be good should be i and the Ice Hogs actually have an advantage, even though they're the five seed taking on the division champion. This is a best of five series, and because the AHL is weird and and has and kind of broke apparently, they get the first two games at home. And because of the even more weird and wacky playoff system, the Texas Stars haven't played in twelve days, almost two weeks since their last game. So hey. You won the Central Division. Congratulations. Now take two weeks off and have the first two g- games of a five-game series on the road. That's going to be huge for the Ice Hogs to jump on them early tonight while they still have some rust, while they still haven't gotten their legs. Get the puck on net. You know, Matthew Murray hasn't seen a puck in game action in two weeks. There's a big difference between taking shots at practice and taking sh- live rounds in a playoff game. I expect the Ice Hawks to be all over them early, and hopefully if they can get a goal or two in the first half of the first period, that's that's good for them. And then if Texas gets out of that first period, either with a lead or at least tied, that's a huge win for them and a momentum builder going forward. So that, that first period is going to be awesome tonight. It just feels like such a colossal disadvantage for Texas. And I know it's just it is what it is. It's minor league hockey. It's the way the playoff format works, and it does get more teams – you know, at least playing meaningful playoff games, but uh, that it's it's like you're punished for being good, which 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 sucks. So yeah, I, I think like I have to imagine that uh, Andre Sorensen's message is jump on these dudes fast, take advantage of the fact that they're going to have heavy legs for the first you know period period and a half, and try to get out to a lead and take this first game because I mean you talk about winning game one in the seven game series and the five game series, it's huge. It's huge. Like it's so I, I don't know. I, I, I expect I would be floored if we don't see Rockford coming out to start this game, you know, as if they're like their skates are on fire, just trying to take advantage of that rust. Cause it's, you're right. Like you said it with, with Matthew Murray, you can't duplicate game speed, game situation, all those sort of things. Um, so go at them quick, jump on it quick. And I, I hope that's the way the ice hawks do it. And I'd, I'd be surprised if they don't. Yeah, and you know it's it's kind of strange. As I said, the Stars the most points in the Central Division, and then they have a chance of a realistic chance that they could be facing elimination before even stepping foot on their home ice in the postseason after winning the division championship. It's so weird. Like it's great for the Ice Hogs that they could. I mean, you if you split this, you only got to go to Texas and, and, and you know. But if you can somehow win both tonight and Sunday, you only get, you got three chances on the road to win, and that 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 helps a lot. So the Stars are favored in this series, but I think the Ice Hogs have a real good, a legitimate chance of upsetting them. Unlike last season against the Wolves, I think we kind of all knew that like, yeah, they, it was going to take a miracle for them to make a series out of it, let alone advance. But this year, I think it's a little different. But we'll see. You know, all this talk, and then the Stars can come out and score in the first shift, and we could be like, whoops, well, we read that wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what that's that's the way that they came out against Iowa in, in, in the opening game. They were they were all over them right from the jump and, and taking advantage of that, you know, early home ice, even as the, the under-seeded team. So, yeah, I'd expect them to – the Ice Hogs to come out and do the same. And um, as, as Narfin says, you know, it's – it's the AHL, so travel is always yeah. uh, a consideration. So you're not going to do, you know, two, two, one, or anything like that, or, or you know, go back and forth for for each game. So the Ice Hogs really have a, a an advantage tonight and on Sunday. Like it's 
it's a big advantage to potentially take take two games and, and have the home team on their heels before they're even you know back in Texas. So uh, yeah, it should be a really exciting um, beginning to the series here, and and hopefully uh, you know the 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 game against Iowa last uh, last week was a lot of fun. It was a good good atmosphere at the BMO. I hope uh, you know there's been more some more time for for fans to to get tickets. I, I, it's a Friday night. It's not a Wednesday night. It's two dollar beer night. Like I would, I would expect tonight's uh, atmosphere at the BMO to be very, uh, very playoff esque. Uh, so it should be a good time. There's yeah. the there's the key is the uh, two dollar beer night uh, <laughs> on a playoff game. I, I expect that that the BMO is going to be quite. I mean, look, it was a great atmosphere against Iowa the other night when we were yeah. there. I, I think tonight's going to be you know probably double that because they've had time, like you said, to sell tickets. There were discounted tickets going for a while, and then two dollar beer night. Yeah, that second third mm-hmm. period, as people start to get lubricated a little bit, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun. I so I know we're all gonna be watching Lucas Reichel. That's sort of the default answer uh, as to like who's the player to watch in the series. But I'm gonna really be keeping an eye on uh, Vlasic and Isaac Phillips because um, I do feel like those two are probably the closest to making the NHL jump. And um, I liked what I saw from both of them at the NHL level this year. I think Phillips was maybe a little less consistent than I had hoped he'd be. In fairness to him, he didn't really get a prolonged like week or two of uninterrupted play. Um, I would like to see him, and at the next year I think he will, uh, get longer stretches where he's not in and out, in and out, in and out of the lineup to kind of get a rhythm and find a partner. Um, but those are the two guys I'm going to be watching the most, primarily for me, Phillips, because I'm just really excited about him. I mean, you, you hear the way people talk about Isaac Phillips you know, in the organization, and they're just so excited about him. His athleticism, his size, his length, like everything. Um, as soon as you bring up the name, you know, we talked to Mark Bernard after the last game, and he, like, could not stop raving about Isaac Phillips. Like, and I'm I'm excited for him, too, because you want to talk about, like, the eye test and, like, this guy looks the part. Isaac Phillips looks the part. That guy looks like a star athlete. Mm-hmm. Like, if he was walking down the street – in you know Cleveland, people would be like, "That guy is somebody." You know what I mean? <laughs> like he's got, he's got like that athletic presence to him. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I'm going to be watching him very, very closely. How about you guys? Well, and and two on Phillips. Like, talk about a, a guy that fits the the Kyle Davidson like high yeah. char- high character model as well. Like he's, if, you know, he's from talking to him. Uh, I know Greg, you've had opportunities to talk to him as well. Like he's just a, a really a really great kid. Uh, so I, and you know, as much as people rave about him on the ice, his off the ice is, is tremendous for, for a guy of his age. So I think that's, that's an extra reason to be excited for him is just, it's, it's somebody that's easy to root for. So, um, yeah, Phillips, Vlasic, Reichel, like those are the, like you, like you guys said, those are the NHL guys, uh, that are, that are kind of on the cusp. Um, one guy that I, that I want to pay attention to, to kind of see where he's at. Uh, and I tried to do it a little bit when, when we were there for the Iowa game is, is Alec Regula because, He's another one of those young defensemen that I think is still in the mix to be like and to, to be in the NHL fold for, for the Blackhawks. I, I think there it's it's too early to kind of write him off. Um, but he's also, you know, he's he's definitely behind Phillips and Vlasic as far as you know it, what it feels like the the you know depth chart is of, of the next round coming up. And then you got guys like Nolan Allen and Kevin Korchinski and Ethan Del Mastro uh, coming into the, the professional ranks in the next year or two. So and he's an RFA this year. Like this is this is a big opportunity for him to have a, a really good uh, showing in some really important games. Um, so I, I want to take an extra look at uh, at Alec Gula tonight, see what he does uh, on the blue line. And you know, one of the guys that I know he's, he's not going to be playing in the NHL with the Blackhawks anytime soon, if ever. Um, but the guy that they brought in that was, uh, you know, the overtime hero against Iowa, Rocco Grimaldi, like he is a fun, fun player to watch at the AHL level. Um, you know, he had some NHL time with the uh, with the Predators for a while there. Um, but he's a he's, he's a true hockey veteran. Um, he's he is probably the smallest guy that will be on the ice between both teams, might be the smallest guy in the AHL. Uh, but he is a water bug out there. He's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, and he's had some really good uh, chemistry with uh, with with Reichel and uh, and Joey Anderson and um, just playing around with that top six with Gus and Sini as well. Like he's 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 a fun guy to watch, and and it's been cool to see him kind of come in late into the uh, into the year with the Ice Hogs 
uh, and be one of the go-to guys. So it's been fun to watch him play. Uh, on your Luke, on your uh, Isaac Phillips thing, real quick, you mentioned all the guys coming in. So if you're, we're given Vlasic, Phillips, Del Mastro, Nolan Allen, Korchinski. There's five. You've got Seth Jones, who isn't going anywhere. Connor Murphy probably isn't going anywhere. That's seven. So where does that leave Alec Regula? And that's it's a good question because he's yeah. a, it's another guy who you like the skill set. You know, like he can move the puck. He can score a little bit. He's he's pretty big for a puck mover. Not overly physical, but can play that game if needed. It's a nice player, and maybe that becomes your top call-up guy when you have your you know your fully imagined uh, NHL roster. But uh, you know, Regula, who's a restricted free agent after this year, he can't really like just say I want to go somewhere else. But he's got to be looking at kind of the, the the sands and the hourglass running out for him here in Chicago, because all of a sudden this new influx is coming in. Um, He's going to have to make the most of the opportunity he gets next year, and he'll get some um, before Korchinski arrives. And whoever, and look, whoever they draft this year, right? Like you know, right. they're going to take at least a couple defensemen in this draft. So where does that put him on the depth chart? Then I don't know. So he's got a shot. I think his best shot is to do as well as he can in these playoffs. Do as well as he can at development camp as well as he can in training camp and preseason and sort of force himself onto the roster a little bit and then hope he can hang because the opportunities for him are, are running out because you've got, I already read a lot of five prospects that you probably already rank ahead of him. Uh, two NHL vets that are going to be there for sure. I just don't know where he fits in in the organization. Yeah. I, I, I think he, I think he comes back and he's probably the number one option in Rockford next year. And then, but, but then, Allen and Del Mastro will be there. Who knows what happens with Korchinski? Because he won't be able to go into Rockford next year, but he may he may play his way into the NHL. We don't know. Probably not, but like it's it's not out of the realm of possibility. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a, a log jam coming. Um, but I mean that's that that breeds competition and and hopefully that that brings uh, the best out of each of those players. So if, if Regula is in that situation, hopefully he, uh, you know, he steps up and, and proves that he should be an NHL player. Yeah. I, I think <clears throat> you definitely bring him back. Um, as you said, he's, he'll be the top guy in, in Rockford next season. He'll kind of be that still young player, but he can be that, that guy that could take Del Mastro, Allen, White, Kaiser under his wing and be like, Hey, you know, this is how we do things here. This is how, Hey, maybe one of those guys rooms with him, you know, they get a, a condo together in Rockford and he shows them how to, you know, set up a cell phone bill and, and, you know, all that stuff that these guys have no clue on how to do uh, outside of the hockey rink. Um, and, you know, yeah, he still has a chance to, to make an NHL roster here in Chicago. He's, he brings that he's got size and, and a little bit of physicality, but he has offensive upside with that size. And it seems like these days you're either a big guy that plays stay at home and you don't offer much offense or you're a smaller guy that can skate and you do all this scoring, but you sacrifice size. So he and Isaac Phillips kind of are in between that where they both have size and can be physical and they both can skate and, and shoot the puck a little bit. So that, that gives him an advantage over some of these younger guys coming in. And I still think he's got enough value to where if you bring him in and, you know, Del Mastro and Allen and Kaiser all outplay him in Rockford. There's still enough upside and potential there. And he's still young enough. You can get a decent asset for him. You could trade him for, you, you know, a mid round pick. Maybe you trade him to get something you need at the AHL level to help you or, or, or something. He's still got value. And the fact that they haven't overexposed him at the NHL level yet, helps with that value. I think that's a major reason why Ian Mitchell had no trade value is because they overexpose him at the NHL level and the, and people have seen him like, eh, we're not going to really give up anything for that, but there's still a little mystique around Wagula and he might have some value. Well, 6'4", 208. I mean, obviously big dude had 21 points in 51 games for Rockford. So like I said, score a, a, a very nice 69 penalty minutes. And, and you're right. Like you talk about – they were able to trade Riley Stillman for Jason Dickinson in a second round pick. That's it. It's like, hey, the Hawks have a log jam of defensive prospects. Some other team's going to have a log jam, jam of forwards. 
And maybe it just is one of those teams, that, one of those trades that benefits both teams. You know, because look, we know you got Reichel and you got Nazar. Uh, you know, you like Hayes, you like Lidwinski, Samuel Savoy, of course, all those guys. But when you look at like sort of surefire NHL prospects, up front, like in the top six, are kind of thin. So yeah. maybe that, yeah, like you said, Greg, maybe that's where Regula becomes an asset that way. I mean, he's only twenty-two. It feels like he's been around forever. I've been saying his name forever. It feels like, um, <laughs> but I mean, there's a lot of hockey left for him, and his story is not written yet. I just, yeah. I just sort of feel for him because if we're projecting out, he's six on that list, not including the guys that are sure player. Yeah already NHL. He, he's six on the list here with the Blackhawks, but he could be two or three on a list on a lot of other organizations. So depth at defensive prospects is not is is a very good thing on a lot of levels. A because you know you've got guys that you can eventually bring up and 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 you know replace from within. And you got guys that could be tradable where you can fill in holes that you otherwise can't. Uh, so yeah it, he could prove his value as a trade chip as the season goes on. So I expect him to be back. Uh, and and I'm, he's one of the guys I'm looking forward to seeing in this series. You mentioned Grimaldi, Mario. He was acquired for this exact series, this exact mm-hmm. run. Uh, just a couple of things to put a cherry on top of the uh, uh, Calder Cup before we move on to Stanley Cup talk. Um, to go back to the travel real quick. Yeah, it's not like the Stars are getting punished per se, but – it is because of the travel costs. They would rather get all three games in Texas for you know at the same time if necessary, as opposed to doing two two one. If the Ice Hogs advance, we'll see a more traditional playoff format. If if they play Milwaukee, I'm sure it will be the two two one 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 since that's just a ninety minute bus ride between the two cities. And if it's Manitoba, the Moose, I'm sure it will be two in Manitoba, three in Rockford, and then two back in Manitoba if necessary. So you'll get a little more. Uh, traditional format if the hawk if, if the hogs get that far hopefully they do uh, and we can see how that plays out and far as what I'm going to be watching I'm not really watching a player in particular obviously the focus is going to be on those young guys we talked about as they have the most importance to the future of the Blackhawks I'm interested in seeing how the, that group and the team as a whole including Arvid Soderboom plays when they don't have the puck because Texas comes in with the number one scoring offense in the entire AHL so they have to be very good in their own zone and that's what I'm looking forward to, to seeing how does Lucas Reckle play defensively you know, how does does Vlasic and Phillips and Regula, do they step up in their own zone? Do they are they more responsible or do they try and get aggressive and, and you know, leave the zone a little too early? They got to they got to win in their own zone before they can go down and score. And, and I think this will be a challenge for Harvard Soderblom as well. So that's what I'm looking forward to watching the most is how they play without the puck, because that's going to probably be more important than what they do with the puck, because we know they have plenty of guys who can score. It's keeping the stars off the board that is going to go further than what they can do with the puck, I think. All right, let's move on to the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. But first, we got to talk about our good friends at Shady Rays. Yeah, I meant to grab one of my pairs, but I, I forgot, and I'm not going to go get yeah. them now. But uh, I can't see the computer screen when I have them on anyway because they're so good and polarized that they uh, don't wear them. Your shady rays while trying to do a live podcast and read an ad read, but you can wear them, especially outdoors. <laughs> you can take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead, at least the sunny weather. It doesn't matter how, what the temperature is. When the sun's out, throw your shady rays over your eyeballs. They are Polaroid shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product just as good, I say even better than any expensive pair we've ever worn, durable frames, and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures like driving to Rockford on a Friday afternoon. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the best protection program in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on the very first day you own them, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. You can wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you make your purchase. And you're going to look great and you're going to do great things for others through the Shady Rays 
Impact Initiative. They are partnering with nonprofit organizations across the United States to do everything from donating meals to building play sets for pe pediatric cancer patients and even providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Shady Rays is making an impact in the community and others just like it now and for years to come. And if you don't love your Shady Rays, and you will, so this is just kind of lip service here. You're going to love them. But in case you don't, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's zero risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out the best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use the promo code CHGO, you know that, for 50% off two pairs or more of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades that have been given five-star reviews by over 250,000 customers. And I have been living large watching the NHL playoffs and the Cubs and anything else I want on Fubo TV. I am a cord cutter and I cut it for Fubo TV. I absolutely love it. 140 plus live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. That's a lot of channels. You can stream live TV from any device and watch the most Chicago sports for the lowest price. You can start watching immediately with a seven-day free trial. Go to FuboTV.com slash CHGO. There's no contract. There's no cable. There's no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. You'll get 1,000 hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. You can watch your local teams while traveling. The NFL draft continues tonight, of course. Uh, Bears will be on the clock soon. And, of course, our CHGO Bears show will be there covering the whole thing. The NHL draft and draft lottery are coming up. NBA playoffs, NHL playoffs are underway. And if you want to watch the Chicago Cubs and you're a cord cutter, the only place to get them on Marquee Sports Network is on Fubo TV. Use the link in the description to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. Go to FuboTV.com slash CHGO. Um, all right. Before we get to the playoffs themselves, uh, Val Nichushkin has been um, on, I believe, for the Avalanche for the last few games. I think he played the first two games of the series and has not played since. This story came out today. I'm going to read this from Peter Baugh, who covers the Avalanche for the Athletic. Uh, a Colorado Avalanche team physician located a woman who was heavily intoxicated when checking on Valerie Nichushkin prior to Game 3 of Colorado's first round series with Seattle, according to a Seattle Police Department behavioral crisis report obtained by The Athletic. According to the report, at 3.20 p.m. Saturday, an aid request was called to the hotel where the Avalanche were staying. Two Seattle police officers arrived at the hotel in response. Uh, an Avalanche team physician told authorities he located the woman when checking on Nachushkin before the game. The physician told officers he believed the woman was too intoxicated to have left the hotel in a ride share or cab service, so he called 911. He said the woman hit him, but that he did not want to press charges. A Denver police lieutenant traveling with the team told Seattle police that there were, quote, no reports of any criminal interactions beyond the woman being heavily intoxicated. An ambulance took the 28-year-old woman to Harborview Medical Center. She was in stable condition, according to information obtained via public records request to the fire department. Inside the ambulance, the woman told one of the Seattle police officers that, quote, some guy took her passport and that he was a bad person, unquote. She did not elaborate. She said she was from Russia, but born in Ukraine. Uh, as a follow-up today, Nachushkin's agent, Mark Gandler, denied his client's involvement in a text message to The Athletic. Quote, no one was found in Val's room. He said, these events have nothing to do with Val. So there is the very latest on the Val Nachushkin situation. His agent denies that this has anything to do with his absence. Uh, I'm not going to speculate because I don't know. I don't think any of us know, but I just think it's important to, as this story uh, grows and develops, to keep you abreast of what's going on. So that's the latest uh, unsettling news. However, it shakes out. It's uh, anytime you hear stuff like this, it's just it's gross and it's icky, and I and I hate it. But uh, hopefully, everyone involved is getting the care they need. So, ugly. Hey, it's not a week covering the sport of hockey without at least one gross, icky story, right? Unfortunately, it seems that way. Yeah. Again, with no speculation, um, you know, his agent's denying it. The avalanche came out early and said that it has nothing to do with alcohol. It has no legal issues. So if these two aren't connected, I don't know. Uh, they seem they might be. But again, I wasn't there. I'm not a detective. I don't have all the information. But uh, it doesn't 
and I'm not saying Val Nistucian has done anything illegal, did anything wrong, um, but it's just this whole thing is weird. And until we get an actual statement from either the player, his agent, or the team, these types of stories are going to keep getting out there, and people are going to build the speculation, just like you know, with so many other stories when they aren't addressed up front now maybe the the avalanche are waiting for more facts to come out and that's okay too but just to be like you know nope nope it's got nothing to do with this it's got nothing to do with this you keep people guessing and then stories keep progressing i mean this is not a story this is you got police report this is a fact this this incident actually happened now how it's connected to the player in question we don't know if it is at all but it probably is um, so this story is just weird. It, it's, it's, it's really hurting the avalanche. We're going to talk about that, that series here coming up because it could be over tonight. And this is a guy, the avalanche paid a lot of money to this past off season, um, because he was so valuable to them. His postseason last year got him the huge contract he was signed to in the summer. And now they need him to do that again. And he's MIA for whatever reason. And obviously, and I don't think I need to say that his his physical and mental health are top priority. And if that that's what's keeping him away, okay. But again, I'm sure there are a lot of people in Denver, a lot of Avs fans going, what the hell? Where's Val? We need him to win. We're we're on the brink of elimination and he's sitting at home and they won't tell us why. I'd be frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Um I I really don't know all that much about this story other than, you know, what kind of basically just reading through Peter's uh, story and, and the details that you read off Jay. Um, if, if, if this has nothing to do with Val, then why is he not around? Right. Like, it's a, yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's my, that's my takeaway. If there, if there's nothing, nothing wrong here, he wasn't involved, nothing to do with, with, with him or the team or whatever, then why isn't he playing? So, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to speculate what may or may not have happened or occurred or why the team physician found this woman in his room. Um, but I, I would assume the team physician doesn't have any, uh, any reason to make something up to, or what, or, or whatever. So there's, there's obviously some, some story that isn't being told or, uh, just hasn't been um, deciphered yet. So, yeah, hopefully things work out in a way that, yeah, nothing, nothing wrong happened. Is just an unfortunate string of circumstances, maybe. Um, but as sometimes these stories usually go, it's not usually just a uh, unfortunate string of circumstances. So we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully the, the, the woman is okay. Um, hopefully Val is, is cleared and, and we can all, you know, walk away completely clean from this, but who, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. I, I just think it's, uh, the fact that a physician was going to check on him anyway, and that's when he found the woman is a little bit, I don't think, I, I mean, that could, that could be, yeah. That could be just a routine, like, "Hey, I know Val was a little banged up. I'm gonna go check him before we go go over to the arena." Yeah, could be. Like, I mean, we're getting. I'm getting into speculation territory. I don't. Yeah, want to yeah. I, who knows? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. like like Greg said and you said, Mario. Let's just hope that everyone involved is is okay and taking care of themselves the way they need to. And uh, if there is justice to be served, hopefully it's served, and we'll keep abreast of the story as it goes on. But let's get to the games from last night. Um, we have our first elimination. Hey, the Winnipeg Jets, the Lusapeg Jets are out. Yes, and boy, uh, Rick Bonus, he really he kicked himself in the ass on the way out. He the door. hates <laughs> his team. He hates gonna, that team. I'm gonna try to play this. I've never tried to play audio from live like during the show. So let's see if this works. <laughs> No, nope. can't hear you. No, nope. I don't hear nothing. Damn it! All right, All right. <laughs> hey, more proof that we are actually live every time we come to you. All right. Uh, yeah, the gist of it is it basically said that his team has no pushback. It's been a problem all season. 
he did without saying names, he basically just said the best players on his team suck ass. And he's not wrong. No. Um, once once the Vegas scored that first goal in the opening minute, that, that game was over. It was done. Um so, so yeah, I mean this was this is now two coaches in two years saying these players suck. I can't do anything more with these guys. So it's going to be an interesting summer in Winnipeg. Uh, you've got guys like Mark Shifley, Blake Wheeler, who was stripped of his captaincy. You know, Pierre-Luc Dubois, really good player, but he spends way too much time in the penalty box when it when it matters. He's ready to be a Montreal Canadian. Great. Well, yeah, you got to go play in your hometown. Those are the rules. And even though he's not from Quebec, I, I, I thought I learned, somebody said that. He's not even from Quebec. He's like from Alberta, but obviously someone in his family is from Quebec. <laughs> but he wants um, to be a Canadian. Yeah, that's fine. Go be a Canadian. Have fun. Yeah. Don't no pressure. Um, so uh, Connor Hellebuck, the last two times he's been in the postseason, he's one of the top five goalies in the league, but playoff Connor Hellebuck, not so good. Um, a lot of I think they're gonna blow it up. And I think our old pal Kevin Shevadayoff is gonna be the first guy shown the exit because this is the, this is the team he put together. He wanted to stick with all these veterans, put them together for one more run. The only reason they got into the playoffs in the first place is because the Calgary Flames wanted to get Daryl Sutter fired and their GM fired. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not surprised by the outcome of this series. Um, and and Rick Bonus, you know, hey, he's a guy that's been around this game for a long, long time. And when he's going to say something like that, I mean, the, the audio they, they they showed, I think you're going to play is like 52 seconds long. It was his entire press conference. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, any, any, any questions? They asked him about the team. He said, no pushback. I'm disgusted is what he said. And then he said, any more questions? No, fine. Good. Thank you. And he left. He's That's been all. reading. That's he's all you need to know. To get that off yeah. of his chest. Yeah. Because you can tell the disdain. And like, you look at that roster. That team should be a hell of a lot better than it is. Mm -hmm. And for years, we're like, look out for the Jets, look out for the Jets, look out for the Jets, and they just keep sputtering. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I don't know. They, I don't know if they have a choice. I think once you have a coach who is as respected as Rick Bona, say these guys suck and have no heart, and you failed and failed and failed and failed, you kind of have no choice but to blow it up. And he's not like, the first coach to do that. Paul Maurice walked away saying. I can't do nothing with these guys. Threw yeah. up his hands and said, I can't do anything more with the with this group. And that's essentially what Bonus did in this press conference in, in his comments is just basically said, Look, I tried. They don't have it. And I I don't think there's any choice that Winnipeg has besides uh roster changes. Like they're they're they absolutely need to change the the makeup of that roster in it in the locker room on the ice. Like it like it needs to change and and they they tried to do a kind of a leadership reimagining nah you 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 need you need completely a completely new new culture uh brought into that organization because it's it's just not it's not there like you can be good in the regular season they they made the playoffs because they were really good in in a half a season and then they faced some adversity in the second half of the season and they just if they wanted if they wanted to miss the playoffs they did all that they could to try and miss the playoffs. Uh, and, and they, just because they got off to a really good start, that's, that's what ended up, you know, carrying them, you know, dragging them across the finish line. And, and yeah, I mean, you could say, you know, not having Josh Morrissey, it's a big, that's a big loss, especially the way he was playing this season. Sure. Um, that's a, that's a huge loss, but that team is, is talented enough to overcome that in, and have more of a fight than a five game series. I, I mean, no, the Hurricanes don't want to hear about your injuries. Right. Like, yeah. shut up. You know what I mean? Everybody's uh, got injuries right now. Yeah, exactly. Tom says, are the Winnipeg Jets or New York Rangers the Chicago White Sox of the NHL? Lots of talent, but not a cohesive team. The yeah. only, the only At least those teams made the playoffs. Yeah. The only comparison. Those, those teams spend money. Yeah. It's, it's the, it is a refusal to move on from the core. That is, that is, um, you know, but is that, has her GM been in place for 15 years and never been held accountable like Rick Hahn? Almost. He's been, been here for a long time. I'm yeah, a Cubs fan, but I am like, 10, I, got a lot years. Of, I got a lot of Sox fans in my life and I feel bad for them because, man, Rick Hahn, it shows what you can do if you are well spoken. You can fool people for a long ass time. That guy has never accomplished 
crap in this town and he talks to people as if he is like the smartest guy in the room hmm. see ya it's pretty it's pretty easy when you have no fear of ever losing your job well, ask david ask, ask david poley about that <laughs> that guy's more worried about herb lawrence than he is about winning a team that's real like he's yeah. got his ghost accounts have herb lawrence blocked on twitter that's a that's a major league baseball gm worried about her people don't people don't want to hear the truth because herb spits the truth that's right exactly <laughs> herb has his thumb on the pulse of white Sox nation yes a little little defensive there rick anyway i digress maybe a little bit of a ptsd from dealing with the white Sox in my score days because they are the <laughs> worst to deal with uh anyway yeah so i think winnipeg blows it up they, what choice do they have none yeah uh good. Hey, you know what? When hometown hero Jonathan Taze returns next season, the culture will change. <laughs> there you go. Maybe. He's gonna be he's gonna just like curb stomp uh, Blake Wheeler and teach him how to be a leader or something like that. Yeah. Now that, if if Rick Bonus and Paul Maurice throw their hands up, Jonathan Taze is gonna walk in there and be like, Nope. He's gonna do a Corey Crawford <laughs> after like a week. Like, you know what? No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out. Thanks. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Do we got any, the Leafs? Are we uh we i think we're at we're at uh what's what's the term tight tight butthole time yeah tight booty time yeah booty speaking time. speaking of speaking of her uh, of herb <laughs> yeah that was sorry yeah yeah that is uh that i i don't want to say that that was their opportunity to close the series um but there's too much track record to to speak otherwise like that was that game five was their opportunity to uh you know, have have the lightning down and keep them down. And they just didn't do it. And so now you go back. You're still up 3-2 in the series, but you got to go back to Tampa with all the noise getting louder. Uh, and 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 now it's now it's like, oh, like now you, you, you got to do it on the road. And if you don't do it on the road, then it's oh boy, here it comes game seven. And it's and, and eventually the voodoo will get you. So yeah. I'm I'm still pulling for the Leafs because I picked them in six. I'd like to look exactly correct on that uh, on that pick, um, but man, that was their opportunity, and uh, they're they're gonna have to fight for it now. I mean, that's the thing is, yes. So Tampa, after you know going into yesterday, has to beat them three times in a row. They got one done. If they win that game in Tampa, you want to talk about? I mean. If, did you watch like the end of that game when the Leafs they were down one? They had the empty net. They were so tight they were fumbling uncontested passes. Like there were yeah. a couple times in the neutral zone. I know it happened to Mitch Marner once where the puck was right on his tape and it just hopped away from him. They're playing tight. They're feeling it, man. It is like mm-hmm. I, I feel for those guys. Playing in Toronto cannot be easy. Like no. everything you do is no. questioned and like broken down, and it's like l in your face 100 percent of the time probably unlike any other well hockey market for sure but short of like the yankees or something like that but at least the yankees have a track record of success built up with their fans i I can't think of anything like the leafs in sports quite honestly um and i mean the longer it goes the harder it's going to get hopefully they just come out and blitz them in tampa and just say hey no. We're on the road. Let's let's play no. spoiler here. We need game seven. We need it. We need it just for the fun. <laughs> and no, I want to see Paul Bizonette cry on the air, that clown. I want to see him cry on the air when his Leafs choke this one away and they don't get what we deserve. <laughs> yeah. I Listen, I said it yesterday. Leafs are up 3-1 in this series and all the pressure is on them. And it's even worse now. Yeah, And you can argue that this series could be over for Tampa. Tampa outplayed them in both of those games that they won in overtime. They were up 3-2 with a minute to go and lost it, dominated most of the overtime, and then Morgan Riley's shot from the point gets in at the end of that overtime period. They were up 4-1 in the third period and, and blew it. Like, you could argue that this series could be already over. Yeah. Tampa's yeah. been the better team this entire series so far out of these five games. Outside of one game, Toronto has not looked good. They don't look like a Stanley Cup winning team. They look like a team that is scared to screw up because then they're going to hear it. And then what happens? You screw up. And now the voices of here we go again are only getting louder. And the second they lose game six, they're not going to be able to 
ignore that noise. They look like a team that can't do it anyway. 0-11 in their last chances to eliminate a team. That's I, have I, no, I have no faith in them to, to do this. I'm almost half expecting them to lose game seven on a home ice in the most heartbreaking fashion because it's what they do. Well, that's why I said yesterday, I think if they can get past Tampa, they're going to look like a different team because they'll have slayed the mental dragon. But I don't know. Like, seriously, if, if you're jump on DraftKings and have to bet the outcome of this series, how confident are you to bet the Leafs? I'm not I'm, not as confident as I would to put a dollar on the, the lightning. Like, yeah, yeah, seriously. That's yeah, I, I just we've seen this script. We've seen this script in this movie. It's like Fast and Furious with all the with with all the, you know, 20 of them. Like this is the, this is the Leafs. This is what they do. They they choke, they blow series leads, uh, and they can't get out of the first round. And so I, it's it's up to them. Like it's it talk about you know cores and and not being able to get it done and maybe needing some major roster overhaul with Winnipeg. If Toronto doesn't get out of the first round, are you looking around at that locker room and saying, yeah, this group can do it? I'm not. So no. I, who knows. Who knows what uh, what could what could be the outcome there if they uh, if they fail yeah. fail this miserably again? I mean, just look what happened in last night's game. You had the it wasn't Kucherov and Point and and Stamkos that did all the scoring. It was their bottom six. It was their fourth and third lines. The Maple Leafs don't have that. They, yeah, they tried to trade for depth with guys like Sam Lafferty and and but those guys aren't performing. They're once again relying on Marner and Matthews and Nylander and, and, and Tavares to get the job done. And that's a lot of pressure on a, on a handful of guys. Yeah. And it hasn't worked. It's a great point because Lafferty brings depth, but he doesn't bring depth scoring, right? He's right. a nice bottom six player with some jam and some speed. But if you're, if you're looking for Sam Lafferty to put pucks in the net when it counts, that's the wrong dude to go get. And you need to have guys like that. You need to have an Alex Kalorn that's that scoring goals or, uh, you know, Sorelli. Those guys help you win championships. You can't rely on, on, on your top line to do it every night. And Tampa, that's why Tampa has been so good. They don't rely on their superstars to win every game. They have guys top, middle, bottom of that lineup. They have guys that can score big goals. They can come from anywhere. And that's why they have the advantage, even though though they're down three, two, it just, I, it seems like here we go again to me. And you know, this, it, it just, they, they try, they did some different things this year. They, they added, you know, Ryan O'Reilly has been a huge addition to them for them. You know, I'm not sure what they think so far as, as the return, you know, uh, what they think of Jake McCabe, but he adds physicality. He adds toughness to them. Um, even he's had a couple of moments in these games where he's fallen down or, or serving up a pizza in the middle of the ice. So the pressure yeah. seems to be getting to him at moments too. And he's not even one of these guys that have failed multiple times there. So it's, it can't it's be his, easy. It's his first first taste of the postseason and to do it with Toronto, like that's that's a lot on your plate. Yeah, it, it can't be easy. You know, these guys say they don't read the newspaper or, or Twitter or watch sport, whatever they want to say. It's a bunch of BS. They know exactly what's being said. And, and it's magnified and it's amplified this time of year. It can't be easy. It can't be easy. to When you, when you saw the look on Toronto fans when that game ended, you would have thought that the, the, the series was over and the, and the Leafs now have to fold. Like that was the last Maple Leafs game in the history of, of, of hockey. <laughs> the way they because they know they're like shit that was our chance right now we're probably going to lose this series because they've seen it so many times now watch next that next game they're going to come out and win you know five two or something and i don't know that it's sure. it's been that kind of weird but wherever you feel like you have a feel for how a series is going to go everything sort of changes and let's let's get to the other one that we want to talk about the rangers and devils the rangers lead the series two games to none Looks like they're coasting. The Devils look lost. All of a sudden, the Rangers are on the brink of elimination. They get their asses kicked last night. Um, is it Panarin and Spinachet have four combined points in the series? It was zero yeah. goals. Yeah. Oh, I know. The last three games. Games. Holy cow. Yeah, it's tough. Artemi Panarin's playing on the third line at practice this morning. Third, bottom six winger, Artemi Panarin. But we kind of knew this. 
This is shades of 2017 Nashville series when he was invisible. You know, they, it's, they, it, he, it, it's, it's he dis, he disappoints in the playoffs nearly every season. It's what, kind it's, of his thing. What's strange about it to me though is like not every season. No, almost. I said almost. He's not a big he was guy. He's great with Columbus, but the Rangers, you know, it's 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 underwhelming. It's weird though. Like usually when you see guys disappear, they're like these one-dimensional offense only. Uh, not that Patrick Kane disappears in the playoffs. We know it's not true, but Patrick Kane kind of players where the physical game gets to him a little bit and they back off. Again, Kane doesn't do that. I'm just talking about like the size and 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 uh, whatever attributes of Kane. Panarin isn't that way. He's a, he's a little more gritty than he gets credit for. Yeah. I think it's very strange that he has just kind of had several playoff series where he's been a non-factor. And I don't know if I I mean you could say maybe with the 2017 Hawks that they that the opponents just focused on him and tried to shut him down. Fine, but with this Rangers team, there should be plenty of opportunity for Panarin to score. Yeah, and get yeah. been a Jad too. Like let's be honest, it's been a Jad's an elite player too. And he's been a non-factor too. So it's, I don't know, man. Like all of a sudden, the Devils just figured it out. I it is so strange because I mean those first two games was like, whoa, these guys are not ready for the big time. Yeah. And all of a sudden, <laughs> four nothing they win yesterday. That change and, in goaltending uh, seemed to really spark them. You know, they play they're playing harder in front of the kid. Uh, uh, his helmet is sweet, by the way. Yeah. Schmidt's helmet that is <laughs> looks like skin. Like skin. That is a cool ass helmet. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's uh the devils, man. They they're another team that just well coached. They got 18 guys pulling in the same direction. You know, they didn't let that losing those first two games at home really, you know, uh pull them off their, their record. They've taken it one game at a time. Lindy Ruff is a guy that that knows what he's doing. Gerard Glant, we've seen this story before. Um, does he pay the price if this team gets bounced in the first round? Does Chris Jury pay the price? He's one out there getting all these big names and is not paying off for him. Granted, the Rangers could definitely still win this series. Um, Igor Shosturkin has looked human for the last couple of nights. Those are all big factors. And, you know, for all this talk we've heard, Kane wants to go to New York to play with Panarin. How about you put them together? What a, yeah, odd concept. <laughs> How about you put Panera in with Kane and see what happens? I don't think they've played together more than like one or two games since Kane got there. I think they started. They Is started. They started together when Kane got there for the first two, three games, and then yeah, it, it, neither of them were producing well. So then they split them up, and then things were, were went back and to kind of good. But now in the yeah now in the postseason, that's when you need these guys like Panera and, and Kane and Tarasenko and um, you know Sabanajad. Like these, like those are the big guys that need to. to to pull their weight for this, for this New York team. And I think we're seeing kind of the same thing with, with Toronto. Like they need their big score, big time stars and scorers to step up in, in the big moments. And yeah, they, they have, haven't been there for the Rangers. And that's, that's how you lose three games in a row in the postseason. Yep. All right. Who's uh, anyone getting eliminated tonight? Oh, I think the two Eastern conference series end tonight. I think Carolina, Boston end it. And I think the two Western Conference series are going to go seven. I think Minnesota and Colorado keeps it going. I think Colorado fights back. I think Dallas ends it. And I think the two Eastern series end. We got one elimination yesterday. I think we get three tonight. All right. I think that the Avalanche are going down tonight. That is my prediction. Mm -hmm. Joe Pavelski, by the way, on the ice for, uh, this morning for the Stars. He'll be a game time decision, which means to me he is playing. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. You know, I, we'll I don't see. know. I, if you feel like you got them, right? If the stars feel like they can get past the wild without him, they're probably better off not playing him. But I don't know. Minnesota's tough, yeah. man. Joe tough. Pavelski says he's ready to play. He's gonna play. Yeah, I would imagine. You can't that. you can't keep him out if he's if he wants to be there. Yep. Well, it's gonna be fun to watch. We've got uh, that to watch. We've got the Ice Hogs and Texas Stars. We got the uh, NFL Draft to watch. I'm gonna give mm -hmm. Fubo a workout in the uh, in the Ice Hogs uh, press box tonight, <laughs> so you guys can be. Uh, I'll put the computer between the three of us, and we can watch everything going on at once. So it should be a great time. Hey, thanks awesome. everybody for sticking with us. This is our first like official week of the off season, yeah. right? It's our first full week. Um, so thanks for being here with us. Uh, we'll get into our, you know, our off-season routine 
of you know throwback thursday and, and mailbag monday mailbag monday is underway we will do a mailbag monday show on monday um but we're going to stick covering the playoffs while it's happening while we wait yep. for hawk to use a break and monday will be one week out of the draft lottery yep. so talk about tight booty syndrome it's going to be all of us for the next uh, yep. nine days so it's going to be fun we'll so be here not- uh before we wrap up we want to remind everybody that tonight we've got our big Goose Island draft party. There are tickets still available at allchgo.com. Yep. You night, want to fill in? night two of the NFL draft uh, rounds two and three. Uh, the CHGO Bears crew will be live during rounds two and three tonight. They were live last night from Joe's Bar on Weed Street uh, for round one. The Bears selecting Darnell Wright after uh, trading back from nine to ten. Uh, it was it was a great time last night. I was there at the bar. Uh, everyone was uh, was was in good spirits. Uh, had some good uh, some good times there. Uh, the guys with the CHGO Bears crew they were they were killing it. Uh, they were live the entire first round. Uh, we've we've been there before, but uh, it was uh, it was it was a good time. So come out tonight. I was Io there. Io was there, yeah. Io and 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 the uh, and and the fam and some friends they were there, uh, so that was cool to see. Uh, pretty pretty fun. Uh, Illinois champ went out when the uh, cornerback from Illinois was picked at number five, uh, so that was fun. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was it was a good time. So come out to uh, Joe's Bar on Weed Street tonight, rounds two and three. CHGO Bears crew is going to be there. Uh, they're going to be live during that show. Tickets are still available. Uh, there are multiple uh, ticket packages available at all chgo.com for night two. Uh, there's general admission. Uh, you can do, you know, there, that, that you can do a, a ticket with the drink package or not. The drink package includes uh, beers and cocktails uh, coming from our friends at goose Island. Um, you can do VIP seating seating to sit right up front uh, for the show. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of, a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, again, that is uh, Joe's bar on weed street. Uh, 21 plus obviously to uh to get in valid id is necessary for entry uh so yeah get your tickets and and by the way goose island they are part of the drink package uh they are part of the uh presenting sponsors for this uh this event and for us here at chgo as a whole uh so make sure that you are uh enjoying yourself some goose island tonight if you are at joe's bar uh they got tons of uh, options out there of course 312 the full pocket pills the beer hug series, the goose IPA, uh, go down the list. It'll be there tonight for you to enjoy. And it's always there for you to enjoy, uh, in the Chicago land area from goose Island. Be sure to grab the, uh, be sure to grab an ultra fresh brewery exclusive beer at goose islands, original brew house on Clybourne Ave in Lincoln park, or you can go to the, uh, goose Island tap room, which is on Fulton street in West town. Again, that is from our friends at goose Island beer. Hey, and if you want more energy and money to uh, sample that entire delicious menu of Goose Island beers, well, a good way to get both money and energy is through the ComEd Energy Efficient Program, which is committed to helping families and businesses in the community they serve, helping manage energy uses and lower bills now and into the future. Indeed, ComEd offers a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial industrial, and public se- sector customers of all sizes across their territory. ComEd also offers free facility assessments that can help find energy-saving opportunities like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. Jay, can you tell me more how that works? That sounds very interesting. Yes, Gregory, I can. An authorized engineer will work with you to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. They can be done in person or virtually, and they last about two hours. Within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they can start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project costs, potential incentives, and simple payback. If you own a business, don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today. For energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz. Is that powering biz as in B-I-Z? It is. Schedule it today. I'm going to do that. All right. We're headed out to Rockford. We're going to hit the road here in a little bit. If you're headed out to the game, 
look for us, wave at us, don't take pictures of us, take pictures with us, and get those questions in for Mailbag Monday. Uh, you know how to do it. Tweet us at chgo underscore Blackhawks. Hit us up on our uh, our diehards only Discord, or you can email us Blackhawks at allchgo.com. I will throw up the tweet for Mailbag Monday as soon as this show ends, so you'll be very uh, it'll be very easy to find. So with that, we're going to wrap things up. Thanks to Mario and Greg and Pickle and Stella and <laughs> Steven for running the show. We'll talk to you on Mailbag Monday on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. <laughs>